I've got it, this audio is an elk, right? Like that's what it is. But I contacted Corey with Elk 101. I didn't give him any background information. I said, hey, can you just listen to this audio? Tell me what you think. And he said, Tim, I don't know what it is, but I can tell you this, it's not an elk. And that blew my mind. I said, wow, listen carefully to this. Hey, Unexplained Ones, it takes a lot to make a podcast happen, so if you'd like to support the show, just visit BigfootUFO.com. We are Area 51 Coffee Company. Coffee for regular humans and coffee with twice the caffeine of a typical cup with a buzz that's out of this world. Coffee connoisseurs from across the galaxy seek out our smooth brew with a hint of sweetness in a perfect roast. Area51CoffeeCo.com You will also be assimilated with our Area 51 merchandise. We are invading Earth one cup at a time. We are Area 51 Coffee Company. Area51CoffeeCo.com We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched closely by intelligences greater than man's. Did the CIA write Wind of Change by the Scorpions? (laughs) (laughs) As humans busied themselves about the various concerns, they were scrutinized and studied. Dr. Loeb, what percentage chance do you give it that you have indeed uncovered extraterrestrial or non-human technology? With infinite complacence, people went about their affairs, yet across an immense ethereal gulf, intellects vast and unsympathetic drew their plans against us. Prior to your abduction, did you believe in UFOs or any sort of alien life form? All things unexplained. So some of that I think there will say for close session. Hello, all you unexplained ones out there. Thank you for joining us. We have a big, big, big foot show for you. The reason that we are all together for this show today is our friend Harley Owens. He is from the Bigfoot Reports and Data social media pages, and we are going to talk about your Bigfoot sighting. Harley's story, right? So, Harley could tell you, we didn't immediately just schedule a podcast. I I said about putting some research in. And for me, the, the photos were the least impressive. But it's only when I got into this video of these tracks and this audio, and for time's sake, I'll only play, I think, just the short form of the audio. But that is when I decided this, this story had another level to it. Like, it was a lot more than just you know, two-dimensional photo that we really can't prove anything from. So let me pull up this video Harley took here. You can see how we've been in here working around. Okay. Well, here's the first one. Somehow it was walking through here. And there's another one right there. And there's another one right here. You kind of see uh, way down. There's another one there, and then the other one was back there. So it went doom, doom, boom. And then there's trail. Well, I, well, I mean, right, the, I don't know why I stopped videoing right there, but I mean, the trail, I mean, I couldn't really make out any of the other ones. I mean, those were the best ones that I could, like, show, you know. I mean, just, that was all I could really show i mean it's 
because I knew if I didn't have anything else other than those pictures to show that I had actually had this kind of encounter, nobody was going to believe me. I mean, I still had people who didn't believe me, you know, my own family, my own friends, and it it was really hard. But uh, the real the really good thing that I noticed about one of those tracks was like right there, there's a dried up creek bed, and that first track that I show them, and you can see that where it came across, it, it slid. And that I found those the day after that I saw the creature because that that trailway leads up to the ridge where I had seen the creature. I didn't I didn't even I had noticed that, but sure enough, that trailway leads up to the ridge where I'd seen it. You mentioned in the video that you guys had been doing some work back there. What sort of work were you doing? How was it affecting the earth, the ground right there? I mean, nothing really. I mean, we just walked back through there to. Uh, see if there was anything that needed to be taken from the woods back there to put in the auction because there was an old semi-trailer back there on the hill. We didn't know if he had bearings or just different sawmill equipment back there in the trailer. I don't know why they had a semi-trailer over there. I'll never know, <laughs> but we, we went over there to look and see if they had anything in it that could be put in an auction for the owner to get him a little extra money. Tim, one, one thing I just want to ask you about... I. I'm no expert when it comes to, you know, to bears, but it seems uncharacteristic that a bear would stand up to have a look uh, at something, whether it be prey or just for curiosity's sake. Uh, that's not their normal posture and to lean around something. Normally they would, they would just be at their height and they would just kind of maybe, I'm, I'm sure they would peek around the tree, but it's un, it would be very unusual if they're not trying to get something, scare something, uh, potentially attack something to be standing and leaning so that kind of and again i'm no expert on bears but i just want to throw that out there yeah and i would say it's unusual but but i will say not unheard of number okay. one there's a recent ring video you know the ring doorbell cameras right mm -hmm. and i can't remember where they're at they might be tennessee or montana but on the ring video sure enough there's a bear walking on two legs down the driveway <laughs> and and just like just you know jaunting on down the driveway and our <laughs> friend of the show adventurer dane beck right he's from deep montana and he has pictures and videos of bears galore and it's not unusual it wasn't unusual for them on their ranch to see bears you know navigating the brush uh what toddling right like what's it called when the toddler is scooting along the bears will toddle <laughs> in the brush so i think it's not unheard of that hey he's up there on a cliff right the brush might actually be some sort of toddling like uh sit balancing situation going on but i do want to play this audio here and before i do um i want to give a shout out to another person who was supposed to join us tonight make sure to check out their podcast elk 101 is Corey with elk 101 and i'm gonna admit i thought i had actually had solved this case and i was gonna break it to harley you know i appreciate you um, sharing all this with us but i don't think the show's gonna be right for us because i think it's an elk but so i contacted Corey, elk expert with elk 101 i actually did a little research folks and I thought, well, you know, in this part of Virginia, there's not, I, when I heard the audio, I'm like, could that be a moose? Could that be an elk? Well, I know there's not moose in Virginia. And I verified that, by the way. And I said, well, there's not elk either, are there? But I'm going to make sure. And I actually discovered, sure enough, there is a one very well-known herd of elk very close to that area. Okay, so I said, I've got it. This audio is an elk, right? Like, that's what it is. But I contacted Corey with Elk 101. I didn't give him any background information. I said, hey, can you just listen to this audio? Tell me what you think. And he wrote me back. Wasn't that much later. And he was supposed to join us tonight. So shout out to Elk 101. Make sure to listen to him. And he said, Tim, I don't know what it is, but I can tell you this. It's not an elk. And that blew my mind. I said, wow. Okay, we really got something here. So I want to play this audio for you. This is, uh, I don't know if I'll play this entire clip. I got two clips here for you. So listen carefully to this.
getting goosebumps right now listening to it again. Wow. <laughs> Where's the truck? <laughs> Harley, was this audio that you took? Yes, I, yes, it was. Yeah, I was sitting in the cab. I was sitting in the cab of the pickup truck, and I was sitting in the sawmill area where I could park, and I was just sitting there cataloging and everything. And the the night actually after I saw the creature was when the howling was. But that I don't know how to describe those. I guess they were kind of like howls too, but the 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 first set of vocalizations I heard was a, the long, drawn out like wailing sound. And yeah, I and I've got some of that, and I think this clip is even more interesting. There's like a guttural grunt at the end. That's it. That's the one. Let me let me start that back from the beginning. If that don't send chills down your spine. I want to give a shout out to UFO Intros. Our friend said my brother recorded the same sound. Listen to that. And I got to tell you, and I'm going to start this first clip. It's a little longer, but I'd like to say something while this is going on. I get the sense when I hear this. that multiple entities are communicating with each other. Yeah, and I didn't even realize that. I had somebody verify that for me. It sounds like, it, it sounds like language almost to me. It, I'm gonna serve this one back. Mounts, is that your family reunion? <laughs> They're communicating. I thought you I thought you guys would be proud of Tim's research. <laughs> Tim's but, research. Tim ruled out one animal. Like but, of all but of the, the thing, animals that it could possibly well, no, be, no. he ruled out one. <laughs> well no, because Corey is not just an elk expert, he's an outdoor wilderness expert. He he cannot place any sound that he's familiar with in the outdoors that was making well, this i'll i'll tell you i'll tell you i've had people my friends and family have told me that's a coyote or that's a elk no. and it ain't neither one of those no i've heard or coyotes wolf. before that's not a coyote <laughs> I, I hear coyotes every night it's time for the barbecue come on boys i i can get david ellis also because i think i can I think I, I can get contact with him now if, if you guys want me to send it to him. Right now? Yeah. Well, not at the moment, but I'll... Let's, I'll, let's get I'll him on the show. I'll get him on the... Also, he can call uh, in. I can I, Bluetooth him straight over the phone. I got a spectrogram, spectrograph, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. however they say it. Uh, the vocalizations range from 500 to 2,000 hertz. That's awesome. Awesome. That is chilling, honestly. So, you know, I'm I'm with you, Tim. When I look at the picture, I can't necessarily rule out a bear of some sort. I've seen bears climb my in-laws' trees like it's nothing. But you add the tracks to it. You add this sound to it. And there's almost no denying that this is something we haven't seen before. Uh, we being us. I know people have seen Bigfoot before, but it's wild. I've hunted, I've hunted in a lot of different states and spent a lot of time and I've never heard anything like that. Hey, Unexplained Ones, you know what keeps me going each day? Coffee. 
lots and lots of coffee. If you want the best coffee this side of the Milky Way, then you need to go check out Area 51 Coffee Co. They offer their extraterrestrial bean coffee for us regular humans and their DEFCON 1 coffee that has twice the caffeine for those who are ready to take their taste buds on a journey to the unknown. Head to area51coffeeco.com to grab yourself a bag and check out their extraordinary merchandise. That's area51coffeeco.com. Invading Earth, one cup at a time. Hey, DJ. Sure. Smitty, what, what about what about that? You know, we got uh, Harley U2, so we got all those vocalizations. All we need is one more to play drums, one to play bass. I got the <laughs> guitar and we'll have a band. Right? Can play some drums, man. Let's you know who might be for hires. Sex squad. No, no, we're not having a sex in my phone. <laughs> I, I would have to do the singing because I can't play any instruments. But oh, uh, he's yeah. still actually, you know what? He can come on because he owes me fifty dollars. So. <laughs> and I'm not, I might not ever get it back. Mississippi's Hank Williams over there to the right to see Jay's laugh. <laughs> I, I honestly will say this seriously. I have coyotes all around me, and I've never heard them sound like that. No. I mean, it's, as it's a matter of fact, I, I'll tell you this real quick, and that's kind of, but the first night that my wife and I came home from our honeymoon. Oh, boy. And uh, we don't want to know what that is. It, it, <laughs> it was about two o'clock in the morning, and she woke what me in up. in the world? She woke me up, and she said, there are a bunch of kids outside the house screaming. And I said, that's not kids, that's coyotes. Let me go back to sleep. <laughs> but but they don't sound anything like that. I've no. never heard one sound the like that. Coyotes, animal noise, like coyotes, whale, are maybe. coyotes are high pitched. They that's that's something deep. Yeah, and they don't do that that long of a I mean, usually there's a more short, short kind of yips. Very guttural, and stuff. very guttural yeah. inside, very deep. And in this first clip that I'm playing right now, it just sounds like multiple individuals at varying distances using i don't know i'm going to compare it to whales right like various yeah, that's great it, it actually does to communicate yeah. did, you, did you guys hear me say whales just like 45 seconds ago i tell you this man is taking everything that i say tonight and claiming it as his own I'm gonna next, go back and listen. And next tim is going to have squash songs the new album, right? maybe you should be the phd All, i mean you <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he rode my coattails at school for a long, long time. I mean, I'm, goodness. I'm taking CJ's BS to a new level. For those <laughs> that are just joining us, we are chatting with Harley Owens about his Bigfoot encounter. And in case you missed all of it, Tim has just reiterated everything I've said all night long. So. <laughs> <laughs> If you have any questions for our wonderful panel or for our guests, please do put them in all caps. We would love to pull some questions oh, into yeah, our good. conversation tonight. Some of that, I think, sir, will save for closed session. You just can't let me talk, can you? You can't do it. <laughs> you cannot help yourself, sir. All right. Oh, Let's wrap up our conversation about Harley's experience and we'll dive into some bigfoot questions so harley anything else you would like to share about this experience or any others that have happened well one thing that i want to do and i say this to everybody i talk to on a podcast you know i i just want to encourage anybody if you've had an encounter share it if you won't don't tell your name you know i chose to tell my name and get my story out there you know because all I'm trying to do is raise awareness, you know, and that's what I, that's what I'm doing now with my, my group on Facebook. I mean, I'm going out and I'm filming while I'm out there and sure enough, I'm catching in, individuals on film and, you know, I'm, I, they've been interacting with me. Like they, I made a high out of some sticks and they would, they would rearrange the sticks in different ways, you know, and then I, I'd stack rocks. Either they'd knock a rock off or they would, place a new one it's just it's always different every time i go in there you know and it's it's uh it's definitely helping me you know try and get over my, my fear what i had was fear of them you know but now i've come to learn that hey you know i know they're real now and the worst that can happen is they run me off i mean if i get too close and i mean i haven't i haven't stirred the pot too hot yes I mean, I don't, I don't know. I really don't have all the answers that I'm really looking for yet, but you know, 
I'm, I'm in the heart of the Smoky Mountains, and they're they're here. Har- Harley, just make sure only organic fruit. You know, uh, CJ wouldn't feed her kids. You know, fruit with the pesticides. You don't want to feed that to Bigfoot <laughs> I, either. I, I will so, say this. Okay. I will say this. They don't like Granny Smiths. They like to only eat the red apples. Hey, I'm telling Too you. Too tart. It's like, uh, it's just yeah, like my kids. You, they'll, they'll only eat the red ones. I, I come to learn that. And I, 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 they're, they're just like us. I mean, they, they just don't like the green. They, they'll eat the red ones all day long, but they'll leave the green ones. Ironically, sag nuts are in a red wrapper. <laughs> and, and you're not getting good apples anyway, unless you're going to like a farmer's market. Otherwise, you're getting supermarket stuff where it's like, Ten times too sweet than what lab grown, anyway. lab grown. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. and you brought up Harley Marion, North Carolina. I want to give a big shout out to Marion, North Carolina, one of my favorite towns with one of my favorite Bigfoot festivals, and one of my favorite breakfast joints, Elevate Breakfast Company. They've got a UFO and a Bigfoot on their logo. They're great. I'll definitely have to try that place out. But yeah, like I said, uh, George, he was the one that I took out there and he'd never, he'd never seen one. And sure enough, I was right there with him to have his first Bigfoot encounter. And I, it was just a special moment. I was like, well, I, I brought him out here and he had an encounter and that, that was all I could ever ask for. You know, I mean, he is not, he is, he's just over the moon about this encounter. Like he's, he's already working on a book about it and everything. He, he, George Lunsford, if you haven't checked him out, monsters of the world is one of his books and he's got, Monsters of the World U.S. edition, I believe that's the name of it. But he's he's from right there in Marion, and he's a great guy. And I I really was it was really special to be there for, with him and have that first hand encounter. I mean, we got within twenty yards of him. I mean, it's it was it was wild. And this this just happened January the seventh. So I mean, mm-hmm. I'm already kicking off this year with encounters. So it's just wild. It's just nonstop. I mean, I go in here twice a week and it's always changing different i mean they're 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 in this area i don't know why but i mean it's they're here yes if you would have asked me four years ago if i believed in bigfoot i i would have laughed and said i didn't even think that i thought bigfoot was just a joke (laughs) like i thought that that was was just like group you know just a group haha that that's funny but just yesterday i was um, volunteering in one of my children's classrooms and a dad was volunteering and he goes hey your name came up today i I just found out that you do a podcast and i was like oh yeah yeah i'm the bigfoot ufo mom you know like (laughs) oh okay (laughs) and he's like i had a bigfoot encounter and this other woman that i know she had a bigfoot encounter and these people start telling me their stories i mean i've heard so many Bigfoot encounters now that it's really, it would be very hard to deny their existence just because I've met so many very intelligent people that have had their own experiences. But this all brings us to a question that one of our listeners had shared with us. And this is Duncan. I'm going to butcher your last name, Frary, maybe. Duncan said, is there any physical evidence for the existence of Bigfoot? And this is the age old question, right? Like we have a lot of people who are having sightings. We have so many people studying Bigfoot. We've got, you know, the Matt Pruitts out there who are going and looking for Bigfoot and looking for evidence for all those of us that are here tonight. Do you know of, have you heard of any true physical evidence of Bigfoot? So I'll start with you, Harley. Absolutely. I mean, you go and look at the Sasquatch genome project. I mean, how else could they make a genome for something that's not real, you know? I mean, if and if you go into it and look, uh, the mitochondrial DNA from a Bigfoot has human mother. So, and the mitochondrial DNA only comes from a mother. So, the mother's human. Whatever the nuclear DNA is from a Bigfoot, something completely unknown. Mm. If you go and look into it, and I I highly recommend just if you haven't looked into it, check out Scott Carpenter's DNA study in a nutshell. It's on his YouTube channel. I mean, whenever I looked up Bigfoot research in Tennessee, that man's name popped up. And I didn't know he had passed away when he did, uh, or I would have met up with him before. And I was just like, man, if I'd have started doing this sooner, I could have met up with him and got tips and stuff, you know. But I, I, it, it, 
I, it just happened at the wrong time. But, you know, I've, I've watched almost all of his YouTube videos, and he's a huge inspiration to me. And it's, I mean, I'm doing what he done, walking around the hiking the trails of the Great Smoky Mountains, and I'm catching him on a trail camera that's strapped to my back. And it's, uh, I, I never imagined that I would be researching these creatures, and right. sure enough, I am. Here you are. Yes. Well, I, I did not know about the, uh, the genome sequencing. I think that's might be new information for a lot of people. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, DJ or Blake, I know you guys have been involved with a lot of people in the Bigfoot world. Do you guys know of any other physical evidence out there? Well, for, yeah, uh, well, Darby Orkut at NC State is doing a project right now. That's the latest one. Uh, controversy around the Melba Ketchum study. But then again, I've heard people uh, make a, I think it was a Rich Grimal from the former law enforcement officer from uh, Washington that made a compelling case for her. Thing is, is that um, there's there's a lot, a lot of evidence out there. And, and Dr. John Bindernagel said that these an anecdotes are a form of evidence in addition to the footprints uh, that people have seen where they have seen the creature and then they were able to go and cast a print behind that sighting. Uh, the vocals that, that appear on a different spectrum, uh, hair that's been recovered, uh, and, you know, all these sightings. And uh, you only need one to be true. And, well, shoot, Wes Germer has a thousand episodes. You know, yeah. Brian has, you know, uh, four or five hundred episodes. Uh, so there's just, you know, and then I was going to say Vic Cundiff has himself probably like 700 episodes at this point so th there's plenty of evidence out there but to somebody who doesn't want to believe it there's no amount of evidence uh shy of presenting them a ufo right in front of them or an alien right in front of them or a bigfoot that's going to make them say i believe it so you just have to not you have to prove it to yourself that's the only person you have to prove it to blake i'm going to send it your way that was very well said dj i'm quite jealous uh, I, <laughs> just a ditto and move on yeah, i mean it was that was that was really really awesome um but uh i mean as far as you know what i know about the creatures like i said i've spent a lot of my time looking towards the oceans and, and lakes of the world um it wasn't until i got a little older that i started focusing on um wilderness as far as the forestry is concerned and um i mean as far as for tennessee there's been lots of things but arguably the most famous incident that happened 34 years ago this past January 5th, you know, in 1989, uh, an ape-like creature that resembled a Bigfoot was struck and killed right outside of Lebanon. And it was called the Sugar Flat Road creature because that's the road on which the, the teenagers killed this this creature. Um, for some reason, the body didn't end up getting preserved, but for years, the head was on display. And they were able to preserve the head. Now, from what I've learned, the head is no longer on display physically. Uh, but there's a hologram, oddly enough, available for you to see of the of the head. So the, the head disappeared for several years. It came back in 2001 at this shop, which is no longer open. It was like a curiosity shop um, in Murfreesboro. And then it vanished again in 2023. So all that's left is this, um, you know, for public viewing is this uh, hologram. But from what I've seen of the actual head, we're talking, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, very substantial evidence to say that there is a creature uh, that's unknown that is, you know, living in the wilderness out there. And I mean, we're not talking something like Stan Hansen's carnival sideshow. People wonder, well, was that fake or was that real or was that this or this, you know, what? There's a lot of conjecture and theory about things like that. But um, this, in my opinion, I'll put it this way to paraphrase Fox Mulder, uh, I haven't. I haven't seen anything, but I want to believe, you know. <laughs> well, Blake, Blake, one time if you want to come out here to East Tennessee, maybe we can look. Maybe we can look up and have you an encounter. Maybe I'll bring that guitar and I'll start shredding and run go. out of the out yeah. of the damn. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't tried that, so I don't know if it'll work. But I mean, it might. <laughs> so it sounds like we have some audio that. Um, ufo intros shared with us to compare to what harley shared with us earlier so those of you that are just joining us we've had a lot of people jump in and out um watching this recording if you did not hear or see harley's in information from earlier be sure to check that out after the show go back and start from the beginning to watch because it is very intriguing 
worth looking at and listening to. So now we're going to compare it to a another audio clip. Yes, and this. shout out to our friends at UFO Intros. They're listening on X or Twitter. Hey, guys, we really appreciate you. They joined DJ and myself one night for the not-so-traditional Christmas story. <laughs> so we were <laughs> really pleased to have them there for that. And um, I've jumped in on a lot of their Twitter spaces. They do some great things. Check them out on Twitter. And by the way, tonight we're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And we're getting all the comments in. So we appreciate all of you. I think this audio will play. Let's see what I can do here. You know, the other thing I was going to say, Tim, is that even if listening to Dr. Meldrum's hour and a half dissertation on the Patty film alone, for just that one, you know, the best film that's ever been taken. Oh. We heard that. Our it comes again. I'd be running for the dang hills. That's a, <laughs> that's eerily similar. Thanks for passing that on. According to X, this is a post on UFO intros. It was recorded near Ten Cup, Wyoming. What a great name. Ten Cup, Wyoming, inside Ooh. of a camper. They'd heard this twice before. This was the third scream, which his hunting buddy was mm -hmm. able to record. That is yeah. It really similar. is similar. This is from, it says December 5th, 2022. That is wild. That's, that's what you say, Duncan. By the way, everybody I says, know. I would do something until they're in that situation. Heck no. Yeah. I know exactly what I would do, and it would not be yeah. getting any closer to that. You'll, you'll never get me to say that I could do what Harley did, because I don't know how I would react, and nobody does. Right. Um, Rich Grimau, you know, was a you know, SWAT law enforcement officer, and he was looking for the nearest place to run to because it was between he and his truck, so he ran to a road 75 yards away from his sighting. That's how scared he was. So none of us can say I would do what Harley did because we you don't know that. Yeah, you don't know yeah. that. So you bet. And even even if you did manage to do what I done, I mean, and you did try to show you know people that you're close with, they're still going to ridicule you for that. I mean, it's right. just human nature. But you know, I've come to learn and accept that I know that these creatures are real. And sure enough, so here three years later, three years later, I'm. I'm still having sightings, you know, and it's just, it's just amazing to me that. That's why you've got us. That's why you've got us, Harley, because yeah. we, you know, you're either in one or two camps. You either think every single person who within fear has come on one of these shows and told their story and you guys have all heard them. I don't need to name the channels either. Every single one of them is a liar, but if one of them is telling the truth, it exists. I mean, it's just simple as that. And I think most of them are telling the truth because they have to get through a filter that is, in this case, Tim and CJ and, and Smitty or, you know, whether it's Wes Germer or or Brian uh, King Sharp, etc. So mm, absolutely. I, I don't think everybody's lying. I'm sorry. Uh, you guys have great evidence. And there's just no opinion. benefit to it. There's no benefit to lying. No, no nobody's no, getting nothing. rich off of these things. Yeah. Nobody's getting famous off of these things. If anything, like Harley said, they're losing friends and family. They're losing, you know, to to share what they've heard and seen. And, and there is this huge fear and this huge stigma. And I have to wonder why the stigma still exists, given everything that we have seen, everything that the government is releasing on, on UAPs and what have you. There still is a huge stigma. Even I'm afraid to say that I host a podcast about UFOs and Bigfoot for that same stigma. Well, we're, we're just a part of the cool kids club. That's what I've been telling. That's people. right. <laughs> you mean we're not getting famous for this? I'll see you. I mean, no. I'm cutting my camera off right now. <laughs> <laughs> Your 401k is getting bigger right now, Smitty. Yes. <laughs> that reminds me. I have to say this before I forget. One of my favorite quotes of all time. We have Blake Best on, and he says, uh, and Smitty pops up. I can't remember what episode this was, and he said, "Holy moly." Smitty, you're so much like the Bigfoot. You are rarely seen, and so <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm a busy man. What can I say? Like I've never been, thought he was gonna see the legendary Smitty. I've been promoting my book a lot, so. Oh, fun. To be continued. 
Hey, Unexplained Ones, are you ready for your next adventure? Then look no further than UFO Watchtower in Hooper, Colorado. Experience the wonder of the cosmos with guided tours, skywatching events, and firsthand accounts of their over 300 UFO sightings. Whether you're a seasoned ufologist or just curious, the UFO Watchtower welcomes you to explore the mysteries of the universe. They are currently open on weekends for tours or during the week for camping. Give them a call at 719-378-2296 to book your trip today. Thanks. Like. Share. Follow. Comment. Subscribe. Support. What's your hot take on Travis Taylor? <laughs> it, I've got an exclusive for you guys if you okay. want it about yeah, the Alaska. Absolutely. We do. Okay, okay. More at BigfootUFO.com. All things unexplained. So some of that I think, sir, will save the post session.